Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. If you want to get more done with Excel, you are in the right place. Today, we are going to cover 100 Excel hacks for business productivity. These tips and tricks will help you to save your time, make your work Excel easier. We will show you some cool shortcuts and powerful features that can make a big difference in how you are handle your data. Get set ready with your Excel expertise and let's dive into our awesome hacks that will make you a more productive in your daily regimen life, right? So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. insert a radar chart in MS Excel. Suppose you have a multiple data sets available and that you want to compare it right side by side. That time we can use it. It's very simple. I find this technique is very useful and easy to make you understand. So that's why I pick this up as an example. Select any of the cell, go into this insert and then recommended chart. Click on all charts. There is option called radar. Select radar and then simply just select this chart and then OK. As soon as you hit OK, you could see the result has been imported. Now, if you want to see it individually, you can see the individual as well. You just simply need to drag it like this. One to one comparison, one to three comparison. Okay. So and so forth. Okay. So basis that you can easily do it. So this is the effective use of radar chart. And this is really effectively used in statistics. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. Updating a rack status is very easy. Okay, one of my colleague was doing this manual task. He was updating the color like this and then so and so forth. So instead of doing this manual stuff, I simply just select this entire column, go into a home ribbon tab. There is an option called conditional formatting and then data scales. Here, if you could see, there are ample amount of options available, right? Other colors as well red white and blue you can add that skill as well if in case you have a specific requirement simply just click on more rule and then three color scale simply i'll just say number 30 then it's red for me 50 is amber and highest would be let's say 100 would be a green for me and accordingly this automatically numbers will get changed and you don't need to do a manual task updating a colors i hope you found this useful folks so please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching in excel stop calculating a manual year month and day okay with the help of simple formula you can do that how it is simply just add a dated if function start a comma your end month or year whatever date you have right and then add a year press enter you could see the result has been displayed cool likewise this now we want a month if a date end date double inverted comma month cool if start comma don't skip this video because at the end I'll show you the bonus tip calculate a age of the particular employee that time we use this formula dated if start end and the year this will help us to calculate AAJ as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. Scatter plot, how we can focus our data. This formula is basically when we add a scatter plot, that time we get this formula. Select a, this two column, go into the chart section and then scatter plot aside, trend line. And then there is an option called linear forecast. Cool. As soon as you insert a linear forecast, one line, dotted line would be here. Right click, okay. Format trend line, okay. As you display equation on chart and then close it. As soon as you click OK, you will get this formula added here. Simply just copy this formula and then paste it over here. Okay. This is your Y variable and this is your X variable, which multiply that with the time series, which is this. As soon as you hit OK, you will get a result like this and then simply just insert the result. And this is your forecast final one suppose you have a data set like this week until week 4 and 2 3 4 correct product name and the sales amount 50 50 to 107 right those criteria needs to be added in a group one so what i'll do i'll just say group one copy 
paste. Okay, I'll just check. It's in a manual task, folks. So instead of doing this manual task, simply just click on this any of the cell. Click here histogram. You could see many product category added into so and so category. Likewise, we can do it. This histogram. In this histogram, we can see a week-wise bifurcation in which week trend we are having a maximum product sell. Cool. So week three and week two, we have a maximum product sell. Week one and week four, we have a low. So this is how we can analyze our data with the help of histogram. This is one of the effective way to analyze your data. Suppose we have a data set like this: week one, two, three, and four. We just want to see a high and low data points. That time we use this scatter plot. Simply, what you need to do for that: week one and sales amount. Just select it like this. Okay. Go into the insert. Click on the recommended chart. As soon as you click on recommended chart, you will get a scatter like this. Cool. Just insert it. As soon as you insert. Ensure that you are selecting this point, okay? And then click here, and then data label. Likewise, select this data label. And then this is the last one. This is how you can compare a data, right? Week-wise sales amount, week on week, and which is high, which is low, right? On scatter plot. How to use a Kaizen in your daily resume activity, right? At the time of quality, at the time of production. First step is that engage employee, gather ideas and suggestion. First step. Second, Second step, step, identify the problem, compile the data and identify the issue. What is happening exactly? Analysis basis on the identified data. Okay, ensure that you are doing a analysis on that particular data set, and make sure that you know relevancy of the data is. Truth data source, cool. Solution suggest at least two to three solutions based the problem you have identified. Implement as per the need and the feasibility. Implement that. Result evaluate the solution effectiveness. It's really important, folks. Standardization. Standardization. It nothing but a continuous improvement cycle. Deploy successfully and keep improving on timely basis. to insert a hyperlink and how to remove that simple task first i'll insert a hyperlink i'll simply press control k and i insert this hyperlink okay you could see this power has been added right i want to remove this hyperlink simply i just right click and then remove hyperlink okay control z again control k cool you can remove from here as well remove hyperlink okay third type simply click on this option clear and then link okay simply here if you could see the eraser has been added you can either click on this clear hyperlink only or maybe you can simply click on this clear hyperlink and formats okay i'll simply first click this now you could see the hover has been gone put this cursor over here again simply clear hyperlink and then clear hyperlink and formats now the text has been converted into the us format so this is how beautiful function about hyperlink In Excel, you see this Roman's number, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so on and so forth, right? How we can add that with the help of simple formula? It's a very simple task to do, folks. Okay, simply just add a is equal to sign and then type Roman. Okay, what is the number? So number is this bracket close, press enter, and then just press it like this. you could see the roman number series has been imported automatically with the help of single formula thanks for watching have a great day ahead meaning right so here what i'll do is simply merge this first okay and i'll say is equal to today 
and I simply say 365 days. Okay, from today of the marriage is 27 06 2025. If I want to check a days remaining, what I'll do, I just simply select this is equal to this minus. Let me just add a appropriate formula like this. Go here and just say number. Here, what I have did, I have just added a data validation. This is this friends and family, and yes and no. Suppose this is the invitee for me, right? I have sent this invite, yes, okay, received no, and so forth. I have sent relationship between this, so I'll just say friends, and this is the family, so and so forth. Cool. So this is how we can create a own customized wedding invitation tracker, which will help us to understand how many invitees are there and to whom we have invited for the wedding in daily resume activity when we are using any kind of a tool right more frequently that time we can use this option simply i frequently use undo cut button right save and i want right now conditional formatting as well so i'll simply click customize quick access toolbar as soon as i hit simply just click on this uh, option conditional formatting and then just add it like this Suppose I want a custom sorting, I can add that as well. Decrease the font size, I'll insert that too, okay? And then simply, I'll just click, okay? Select this, custom sort, and then this pop-up will come, okay? And then I'll do a sorting like this. Cool, so this is the most frequently used tools we can easily add in the quick access toolbar. It's a very simple task to do, folks. Suppose we have a data set like this and we want to categorize this data in a way, right? So leadership can access this data in which particular quarter we have the profit or maybe the loss, right? So how we can do that? Simply just select this content and then add a PO table. I have did uh, simply over dates over here and then products and then simply just right click. Okay, first of all, refresh this data. Okay, because I've made some changes, right? So now you can see one, two, three, four like this. Simply just right click, group, and then click here, quarters, and then year. Carefully observe, as soon as I hit OK, you can see for the year, this particular year, right? We have this quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three. Cool. So I haven't made any kind of changes in the existing data. However, in the visualization itself, at one simple click, we got a quarter-wise bifurcation added. when we access a data that time we check if in case there is a duplicate entries available or not right so in home ribbon tab there is an option called conditional formatting and then we go usually highlight cell rule and then duplicate cell right this is the duplicate entries i can see it over here right now i want to remove this duplicate entry how we can remove that don't do it manually simply just go into the data ribbon tab and then there is the option called remove duplicates okay so we can eliminate these duplicate entries simply just click over here remove duplicate and make sure that you are selecting this option my data has a header and okay simply just click on okay you could see at simple step okay you have removed a duplicate Control shift L, okay. You can add a filter like this. Say Alt D F F. Okay, it's the second step. Here in data as well, there is an option called filter. You can apply from here as well. And the fourth step, which is the formula driven, simply just type is equal to filter. And then what is the array? So this is the array for you. Select data range. What you need to include? You want to include a this. So include this is equal to this particular sign comma if in case it's empty then i want a blank just press enter cool you could see you have simply added a specific criteria based filterization how to import a scatter plot in ms excel it's a very simple task to do folks this is the table which i needed and this is the title for me product a product b and quarter wise details simply just like this any of the sale and then scatter you could see there are variety of options available right you can pick this 
this data visualization skills okay we can pick that up i want this so i'll just simply just select this make it small and then turn on the data label option you can see fruit sales product a it's in line blue and fruit sales product b it's in product b so this is how we can insert a scatter plot in ms excel thanks for watching have a great day ahead data conditions like this okay you have a product a to until product e okay these are the data sets and these are the product category cool now you want to analyze this simply just go into the insert ribbon tab and there is an option called line just select this range and just say okay and drag it down like this at the top you can see the multiple colors points available for you or maybe the styles you can pick it out from here we can also select columns as well column and then just select this again hit enter like this and then if i want to change a design of this i can change that too likewise you can do it for win loss as well hope now you understood how sparkline works in ms excel this will help you to visualize your data correct thanks for watching have a great day ahead simply just select any of the cell go into the insert and then there is an option called pie of pie cool we can simply just select that now you can see there are two pies has been inserted now what is that exactly so if you could see right over here run vijay is the this particular section we have it and then likewise we have subiksha samiksha rohit okay arnav and guru okay so these are the sum up um, calculation and we have got the bifurcation added in the next pie chart okay so in the chart style itself i will simply click on this particular option so here i can see the percentage has been assigned or maybe the sales has been made by the respective employee so let me just zoom in cool so this is how it looks like so very effective way okay we don't need to do here and there right i hope you found this useful folks so please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching this particular scenario majority of the times when we do a interviews right that time this question ask how to find out a accuracy solution over here like this so we have total 70 questions cool how many errors we have made it's made 14 right so a is equal to sign we need to do a this minus 14 so we got 56 now we want to calculate a accuracy it's a very simple simply just let me just highlight this and then like this white and i simply say equal to first i'll say the correct answer divide by my total questions enter 0 0.8 and then simply just click on this option called percentage you can see at simple click you will get the answer the accuracy percentage is 80% Excel let's do a stock analysis so very simple task to do folks suppose this is the data set we have date high price low price and a close let me just convert this into the price okay now this is the price segment added simply just select this go into the insert tab and there is an option called stock here we simply click on this option called high low and close cool now if you want to analyze that as per the day wise okay I'll turn on the labels likewise. Cool. And the grid lines off. We don't need a grid lines. Cool. So this is how we can analyze our data in Excel. It's a very simple task. I hope you found this useful folks. So please hit the subscribe button. We can insert a symbol in MS Excel. Ratings, directional okay shapes so and so forth okay how to do that it's a very simple task to do these are the icons you can see it over here right directional shapes indicators ratings how we can do that simply insert that let me just remove this uh, rule first entire sheet i want this to be added i can say it like this ratings i want this low and then i'll just simply go over here i can say it and then i'll just say shapes I want this 
to be added as a icon set once again and this time I'll select this cool so this is how at simple click you can do this icon sets added in MS Excel Welcome to Discover Talent Presents folks. In this series, we're going to cover Excel important data formulas, which will help us every data analyst to work more effectively and efficiently in MS Excel, right? So without further ado, let's quickly start. We'll start with this formula called workday.intl. Cool. So we'll simply just copy this. Okay. And we'll simply paste over here and I'll remove a white space from here and I'll just say enter. You could see result has been displayed over here. However, it's in number format. So for that to get the result, simply just click on this short date. Now, what is the use of this workday.intl? So it helps you to find the end date of the project. Cool. So what I have did, I have added a workday formula over here. And then this is the start date for me accordingly 10 days. Okay. If in case you want to exclude a weekends as well, we can do that as well. Okay. Suppose I want to exclude this Saturday Sunday so I can remove that and I just say enter. Okay. So result is different. Cool. So we are saying here 10 days and here if you could see over here, it's a 15 days. Right. Because we are excluding a Saturday Sunday, which is our holiday specific to our MNCs or maybe any of the industry you are working with, right? So that time we can see that, you know, this is the day where we having a off. So we can exclude that. This particular formula, majority times WFM folks use it. Okay. Every data analyst use it whenever they need to create any kind of a dashboard or maybe any template, right? To share with the client. Cool. Let's move ahead. Now we can see this network days dot INTL. Correct. So let me just copy this again and simply just paste it over here and I'll enter it. What is it exactly? It will help you to calculate a total days of completion for your respective project. Okay. So let me just explain you this particular formula network days dot INTL type in your MS Excel start date. This is your start date. And then if you want to add a end date, you can add that too. Simply here, if in case you want to add a weekends as well, you can do that too. Okay. Just do a comma and then just add it Saturday, Sunday basis to a requirement. I don't want that. So I then simply just deselecting that. And this is my result. Cool. So, so far what we have seen, we have seen a workdays dot INTL cool, and then network days INTL. Great. Now let's move ahead and see what is edit function. Okay. Edit function is basically help you to add a month in your day. Okay. So what is, so what it is exactly? Let me just copy this again, simply paste it and then enter. I will say short date once again. Okay. So let me just change the current month. Okay. So this is my current month ongoing month I will simply just say 7 over here and just say 1 8 9 10 so what we have did so we have added a 3 months over here cool so this is done again this is completed now let's take a look at a EO month okay so EO month is basically when you are into a current month and you want to identify a next month's last day so that you can check that okay simply over here what i have first of july 2024 and then i will get a result 31st of august 2024 cool which means this from this to this 31st of august which is the last day of the month cool so this is what it is and we have completed this as well weekday okay and I'll change a range as well for this. Simply, I want this to be a range added over here. 17.24, I just say enter. And this is the result, the second week. Correct. 
and what is a one so one is basically your return type you can number basis your requirement i'll select a simply one cool and this is my result added over here now after this to find the day of your week this is what it is now suppose you are using this dated if function okay so what is the use of this dated if function basically it help you to calculate a age correct so copy and paste it and press enter so you will get a result like this great so this is what we have did so far we have covered a almost six formulas okay and then last but not the least which is a seventh one days cool let's copy this and then paste it over here cool now what we have selected we have selected a this start date in this column which is our end date correct and start date is this cool and then press enter so, so this is showcasing us a overall days correct so there is a basically difference of two days this is how most important functions we have covered in this entire series thanks for watching have a great day ahead top five formulas which will be a frequently asked in the any of the data analysis field right if in case you are giving a interview uh, for company right that time this particular questions may ask correct so here it's a very short video for you guys okay we're gonna cover text join function x lookup filter function sort function and offset function so why we are using these functions okay and what is the importance of this particular functions i'll make you aware as soon as we start working on this formulas and this formula will really help you to crack the interview cool so without further ado let's quickly start this is the formula which is a text join function i'll just simply copy this okay and i'll paste it over here cool now i'll remove this apostrophe and then i'll press enter you could see at column a1 right this particular column we have this text a2 to until a11 correct so this particular content we got in one series itself with the help of text join so let me explain you how it looks like so suppose when you add a text join function there's a delimiter will ask okay so what we want we want a delimiter as a comma again ignore if in case any empty so that's what i know we gave as a comma and then we turn on this option called true and then we are selecting the a2 until a a11 so this is the result we want suppose we want a result like this we select this as a range and we'll click over here okay so we'll get a result like this now i'll simply click on this option called x lookup majority of the folks right you already know about the v lookup h lookup right this is the x lookup cool so i'm just removing this now x lookup how it works basically vega so vega is the this particular content i want to identify and then a to a11 so a2 across a11 we already selected comma which is your lookup array what we want to return so return array would be this which is the revenue this is the result we want if in case it's not found then we'll simply select this not found and as a text it will be displayed okay folks simply i just press enter you could see 45000 right this 45000 we got a result cool so this is how x lookup work a filter function i'll simply just copy this once again i'll paste over here okay now in filter function we have added a range okay first we have selected entire array from a2 until e11 which is a blue line right what we want to include we want to include a 
E2 until E11, which is this, correct? Greater than 4, meaning whatever result we have greater than 4, right? Just need to display that at the right hand side. Cool. And then if in case there is a no result, then we'll say as a no result found. Simply just press enter. Cool. If you could see over here at simple click, we got the result added. So this is the formula for filter function. Now we have a sort function available. Copy again, paste it over here. What we have did here, again we have selected the array A2 until E11. Cool. Then what is the index? Sort index is 2 and then minus index. What order you needed, correct? So minus 1 and then I press enter. Cool. You could see the result. Right? Press. Take this offset now copy and then paste cool now what we have did we have simply just select this a1 okay which is this range correct and the we are assigning a location and basis the location whatever location we have assigned that okay post that whatever data is available we want that as to be displayed okay meaning let me just press enter first and show you from header itself okay only we have excluded the headers rest of the result has been displayed over here if you could carefully observe over here correct so for that what we need to do okay simply just add a reference this is the reference value what we are referring to and then row which is the row i mean which we are excluding right that is the row this is what we are excluding now and the column column is 0 so basically it's the 0 column and then 1 0 what is the height it's a 1 0 so basically including your header it would be a 11 so that's what I know it's in a 1 0 correct width, width would be a 5 1 2 3 4 5 cool so any of the width cool and then as soon as I hit enter you could see the result right so once again thanks for watching have a great day ahead One of my colleague was facing this issue. He was having a spreadsheet, right? And to translate the data, he was using a translate.google.com, copying this data, pasting on the web browser, and then simply just you know going here and there. Okay. Instead of doing this manual task, here is a one simple step. There is an option called translate in MS Excel itself, right? You can do that, typing a Alt Shift F7 as well. Okay. You will get this uh, translate added. Simply just select this translate and then you will get a pop-up like this and simply basis on the data you will get to know that I don't know what is the meaning of that particular language okay if I click on this particular swap button okay you can see namaste kya hal chal hai okay this Hindi statement will be added in English okay you can convert this into a other language as well okay basis your requirement basis your clients ask I hope you found this useful folks so please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching This is the product category, I would say, cool. And this is the value section. You just want to split like this, okay? But if you could see over here, 1.6, 2.3, 0.9, you have this value available over here. You can do it through a flash fill as well. That's completely fine. But here is a other solution I'm recommending you. Simply just select this entire text, go into a data ribbon tab in text to column, simply just select on this option called delimited next and then here other just type a dash you could see preview over here and then just simply just say next and finish cool at one simple click you have splitted the content in MS Excel I hope you found this useful folks so please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching So save a chart as a template. It's a very simple task to do folks. Okay. This is the chart I have created first. Okay. Considering the time limit. Now I want to save this as a 
template so i'll just right click it over here and i'll click on this option called save as a template here i'll simply type chart name my chart 1 pop okay and then simply just okay save it i don't want this chart now suppose i'm entering a new month and i want to pull out a chart again simply i'll just go here recommended chart and then all chart section here is an option called template i'll simply click on this option called chart title and then okay you could see at one simple click we have inserted a chart welcome to discover talent presents I am your host Vinod. In this series, we will explore financial modeling. If you are interested in learning Excel and financial formulas, then you are in the right place. Stay with us and learn about financial modeling together. Cool. So these are the formulas which we gonna cover in this entire series. So without further ado, let's quickly start. We'll simply click over here, which is net present value considered as a NPV right in MS Excel simply will add a formula here in G2 correct I'll simply add a formula called NPV here I have a rate so I have I can say 0 0.1 for me comma B2 until B6 bracket close press enter cool and then control D to drag the formula down what is the meaning of this particular formula so I'll quickly explain you this calculates a net present value with discount rate of 10% which is your 0 0.1 cool let's move ahead to understand internal rate of return cool so for that what you need to do simply any of the cell where you want the result right is equal to IRR Again, I'm repeating internal rate of return, which is IRR. And then I'll simply select this B2 until B6. So it's a 13%. This calculates the internal rate of return. Let me quickly jump to the next segment, which is our PMT, a formula called PMT correct we have 0 0.05 divide by 12 comma 60 comma minus 10,000 cool so this is my PV and then bracket close press enter you can see the result available this calculates a monthly payment for a loan with a 5% annual interest over a period. Cool. So this is how we can calculate our monthly payment loan. So this is done. Future value. Now uh, in Excel itself, right, we have this FV formula. So for that, how to add it, simply press FV. And then again 0 0.05 which is your 5 percent comma 5 and per is your 5 0 comma minus 1000 bracket close press enter so this is the value which we are getting a result so what is the exact meaning of this formula so this calculates the future value of an investment correct with a 5% annual interest rate over a 5 years cool now let's calculate a PV which is your present value let me keep this formula over here PV 0 0.05 comma NPER it's my 5 again comma minus 200 bracket close
press enter so this is my present value at this formula what it defines basically right this calculates the present value of annuity with 5% annual interest rate over 5 years with payments of 200 cool let me just calculate here xnpv 0 0.1 comma b2 until b6 and then a2 until a a6 cool again this year is a dummy data set for me folks okay you can add appropriate year so you will get a result correctly for now this is a demo purpose i'm just not showcasing you correct so what we have did so far cool so we got this result add added correct so let me just convert this into the rupees so basically this calculates the net present value for cash flows that occurs at irregular intervals cool now we'll move ahead we'll check internal rate of return for a cash flows correct now again XIRR B2 directly and then simply I'll select a year over here cool and press enter let me just convert this into a rupees so like this so again due to this dummy data set what we have added over here we are getting this result folks okay and this calculates the internal rate of return for cash flows that occurs at irregular intervals now compound annual growth rate over a four years we want to calculate that okay so which is called as a CAGR compound annual growth rate so how to calculate that so very simple to do in Excel so I will say E6 first I'll say is equal to sign and then bracket open E6 for me E6 is this divide by E2 and then this particular sign I will say 1 by 4 close minus 1 cool so this is the result which we got this will help you to understand the compound annual growth rate for over a four years great so let's move ahead debt service coverage ratio cool so let me just put over here is equal to sign sum I will say C2 until C6 bracket close divide by sum again I will say F2 to until F6 bracket close press enter so this calculates a debt service coverage ratio which will calculate as a DSCR now the return on investment okay which is ROI and uh, majority times startups right uh, any of the companies and the financial things right that time we use this formula okay more frequently so how to calculate the ROI here I uh, have simple formula added over here so let me just press is equal to sign and then let's say sum sum from B2 until B6 which is my cash flow right minus E Two, which is my investment right and then I press a bracket here it's closed now again I divide by this investment only and simply this so this is my return on investment okay if you follow these steps I hope you found this useful folks so this is how we have covered entire formulas financial modeling in MS Excel this is the dummy data set what we have available okay if in case uh, you have any questions okay comments feel free to add in below comment section we are happy to address those and please don't forget to subscribe us thanks for watching have a great day ahead
over a period of time how it changes correct the data trends so basically see it in the this particular chart correct the select this content first I'll go over here and then click over here you could see the trend correct let me just turn on the data labels over here you can see values are flowing this is the product correct this is the value is flowing and the percentage is added at the top so this is how we can visualize our data in stacked area chart thanks for watching have a great day ahead with the help of vba we can do that okay what we can do simply just right click vba code click over here worksheet and then simply just type this code sales dot entire column dot auto filter cool so whenever I put my cursor over here at the top I can see this filter has been added over here okay there is a no need to add shortcut key control shift L alt DFF or maybe the in data ribbon tab filter option then no need to do that simply when you hover your mouse at the header you will get the filters added of the data set into a table I mistakenly select this okay and uh, control T tab and then I say this as a table okay cool as soon as I done I can see this particular part it's in table cool now we want to rectify our error okay so how we can do that it's a simple task to do simply just select on the table select this and then click on this option called convert to range okay what it will do exactly it will convert this table into a normal range or cells okay so you will get a pop-up like this and yes now you could see table has been gone now we can simply select this and we can convert this into a table cool this is how convert to range option works in MS Excel thanks for watching have a great day ahead create a dashboard in MS Excel that time we use a slicer okay now in insert ribbon tab there is an option called slicer when I click on this option if you could see over here this error will pop up which means that our data is not into a table format so for that what you need to do select this entire table convert into a table pressing a control T and then just simply click on this insert again and then slicer now you could see this slicer option has been open now what I want I want to filterization basis the status correct and then ok as soon as I click ok so I can see here these are the two status available for me to get the numbers who are passed in this particular table if I want only fail so I only get a fail number Generally in Excel what we do right we do a into sign like this okay we have a quantity available we do a into like this and we get a result like this but whenever we read this formula certain times we are unable to find it out what is it all about what is E2 okay what is D2 okay when we have a large data set that time this let function come into the picture so in the let if you could see over here pretty much explainable right quantity is in D2 price it's in E2 quantity into a price cool and then we got a result so similar fashion we'll do it over here let function and then I'll just simply press a this range and bracket close press enter so this is how we have inserted a let function in MS Excel thanks for watching have a great day ahead so okay you're adding a headers product name okay and then you want to add a some sort of headers over here right and that time when you do it like this what do you do usually you just arrange a columns like this okay which is a tedious task every time whenever you open a new sheet that time you will add a headers and you will again you invest your time here instead of doing this manual step simply just right click view code and click on this option called worksheet type here sales entire column dot auto 
fit cool as soon as you're done with this code simply just navigate the excel sheet once again let me just type serial number product salary so and so forth cool so with this easy step you could see we have saved our time and arranged the column automatically i first let me just insert a any of the hierarchy chart i will simply select this basic one i will type this as a john smith and i'll select this because i don't have this design added over here so i need to add a shape so i'll just add a shape as here copy this again paste click on this text pen here right and then copy this again paste it light so chris lee will press a tab button over here again we have this sara brown and then under sara brown we have this two names and this is how we have prepared our organizational chart so let me just change the design of it in smart design itself there are some various colors as well okay you can get up anything right and uh, apply it as per your preference I'll X match is used to find the position of a value in a range of array. It's similar like a match function, but more flexible and powerful. Let me show you an example. Simply just add a X match function and then just say text. What text are you looking out for? Correct. Jane Smith in the table. And lookup array would be this. This is my lookup array. Bracket close, press enter. You can see the result has been displayed over here. So Jane Smith is available in a second number position. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. One of the most effective time-saving formula which help you to multiply a corresponding elements in arrays and returns the sum of these products. Okay, let me show you in practically what I did. Okay, so earlier what I have did, I have just multiplied this particular part. Okay, and each individual I got the result after multiplying this with the Q1 cells, and after that I got this result, which is a tedious task for me. Okay, instead of doing this manually. Simply just add a sum product formula, select this array, comma, select these two, and then bracket close, press enter. You could see at one simple formula, you will get this result added, and this will save your time as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. When we have this situation, right, we have this product range available or maybe any other data set. That's completely fine. You know? This is a dummy data set for me. I want to join this text, okay, one by one, like this. Suppose I type this, comma, live boy, okay, so and so forth, right? It's in a time consuming when we do it manually. Instead, just simply use this formula called text join and then just say delimiter. So, delimiter, I want this, comma, so here. Just carefully observe over here. If case any empty cells, then simply just use a true. I'll just say true. Okay. And text, what I want, I want this text to be added. Simply bracket close, press enter. You could see the result has been added. Right. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. One of the most trending formula in MS Excel index plus match. Okay, so when we are combining this both is basically used for to look up a value in table based on the both row wise and column criteria. So how we can apply this in our spreadsheet. It's a very simple task to do folks. Okay, this is my product. So let me just add this spelling product. Okay, so product is this C. I let me just type over here so you can see it parallel right is equal to index array would be this this is what we need comma match function I will say match lookup value will be this 
okay and look up array in this particular segment comma zero bracket close bracket close press enter you could see the result has been pop up for product c function okay here this is what the result i want and i will type as a match function and then in match value i will just say one simply select this and then i will select this range is equal to i will type the criteria first which is this correct this is the criteria for me okay i will make it fast okay considering the time limit in youtube shorts cool comma exact match which is zero and then okay just close the bracket just verify the formula once again and once you are confident enough just simply press enter you could see the same result has been reflecting over here in excel there was a requirement to combine a data simply select this okay select this particular array and say concise okay and then press enter if in case you need in another format you can do that as well simply just copy and paste over here okay let me just select this range once again and here i'll say strict cool and press enter you can do this for text as well simply select the range and press enter see likewise if i want this in a text format okay let me select this range again press enter cool so this is how we can easily combine our data at one simple click with the help of this formula thanks for watching have a great day ahead in excel i want to forecast a data for the month of jan feb and march okay onwards for the upcoming month this is how we can do it easily without using any kind of a formula okay simply just select this first column in data ribbon tab there is option called forecast sheet and then simply click over here as soon as you click create column chart you could see this pop up window will be available okay the confidence level data would be 95% if you want to increase you can do that as well cool i don't want to do that it's a simple task to do okay as soon as i click on this create button this is how the data looks like this is a month data which is this and the forecasted month available for me and the value is looks like this sales amount month and the forecasted value if you want to increase you can do that as well okay you can see at the top right this forecasted forecast.ets formula has been appended automatically by excel itself thanks for watching have a great day ahead okay how we can use that effectively instead of using a nested if okay so simply just type a if function and then just say and okay as soon as you press and button two over here okay respect to the name b2 and then greater than equal to 80 correct comma d2 which is this again greater than equal to 80 correct this is the criteria which we are adding over here comma if in case it's met then show me it's pass okay otherwise show me it's fail cool so this is what the criteria is and this is what the question mentioned below and then control d widely used at the time of quality check right data validation option circle invalid data it's a very simple task to do folks okay simply just select this first you have the validation added over here let me just increase that seven minimum and i'll say maximum would be 90 cool and then this is the validation for me suppose i will add a this as a text so this will give me the validation added cool now what i want i want to circle that invalid entries so these are the invalid entries for me
at the time of data cleansing, you have faced this scenario, right? You have the text added and likewise, you have the digits added at the bottom, right? When we do it manually, suppose you want to extract a text like this, it's in a time consuming task for you, okay? Simply select this, press Ctrl G and then spatial and then click here, click on this option called text and then OK. As soon as you hit OK, you will get this error. Okay. To avoid this error, simply just select here is equal to just insert a text like this. A control G over here again. Just select a text and then copy this. Control Alt V and then here we go. Numbers as well. Copy Control Alt V. There we go. Automatically without using any kind of an VBA. Cool. So it's a very simple task to do. Let's follow the steps. Simply select the range first where you want to add this formula, conditional formatting, and then new role. Okay. Simply just click here, use formula. Now this is the header, cash flow. Right, so the header starts from i3. So I will add a i3, but prior that I'll add a dollar sign. Cool, i3, and then greater than, lesser than sign, and then double it with comma. In the format section, what we want, we want outline. So simply just like a outline, okay, and hit okay. Cool. So let me just add a 700 over here. Cool. I want to add a 500 over here randomly cool so this is how we can easily add borders in ms excel hassle free let's understand how to import a cluster chart in ms excel it's a very simple task for the month what we have and the sales amount cool we select this entire range and then click on this option to the column here you can click data label Okay, so you can see the data labels available on the charts. As soon as you hit grid lines, turn off. So you can see the grid lines has been off. Okay. If in case you want to add a access title, so you can add that access title as well over here. Likewise this. Okay, you can add this. Cool. And uh, so this is the very easy steady step. You can do it in MS Excel. Let's calculate linear regression slope. It's a very simple to do. First add a index formula and then just say linearest. Okay. Well known Y's. So these are my Y's. Okay. Known X's. So these are the X's. Independent variable. And then I will say this as a B is a calculated. And then simply I'll just say return a additional regression analysis if in case any bracket close comma one okay this is for index function cool so this will fetch you the result called slope okay so what exactly it does it calculates a slope of the linear regression line expenses based on the sales representing the change in expenses of each unit increasing in sales cool so this is how we have added the linear regression slope in ms excel very simple task to do no need to add any snipping tool okay or maybe any other third party tool it's inbuilt function itself in ms excel insert and then click on this option called screenshots you can see various screenshots available which are open in your desktop okay you can easily import those cool so far many screens to... are open over here so that's what it's showing me like this i can simply click here okay and i can take a quick snapshot okay from any of the application. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. NPV helps to determine the value of future cash flows. Okay, how to calculate that? It's a very simple task to do. Use is equal to and then just say NPV. Okay, this is the discount rate for me. Comma simply select the cash flow what you have it right and then press enter cool simple formula gives you the present value of future cash flows which will help you
to make a informed financial decision thanks for watching and stay tuned for more excel tips Welcome to Discover Talent Presents, folks. In this series, what we wanna cover? So before we begin, we'll set a expectation with you, right? So what we are going to cover in this series entirely. So first, we'll add a data, okay? Then we create a dynamic name range. Third one, we will add a pivot table. How to create a pivot, okay? And then, basis the which is the pivot, we can create one chart as well, which is called a pivot chart. Again, we have for interactive per se, right? or maybe the filter uh, prospects we will add our slicers in it and the last but not the least how we can automate that thing okay entirely so end to end video series we are preparing in this module cool so as we spoke this is the first data set we have okay what we have we have dates we have product and we have sales amount over here cool so let me just change this to the rupee Cool. Now let a dynamic name range. Okay. So now why we are creating this dynamic name range? So basically, whenever we update any data inside this particular sheet, right, in sheet one itself, that will automatically reflect into our chart. So that's what we are creating this name range. If in case your data is in table, then there is no need to create a dynamic name range. You can directly plug in the data you can directly update the data and just refresh your pivot you will get the result okay but here is a different case altogether cool so let's create a dynamic range i'll select this entirely first i'll go into a formula section there is an option called define name i'll simply click over here and then define name here if you could see over here right let me just zoom in like this cool name range and then simply delete this here I will select a this sheet one cool so I want a one first needs to be select I will select that but before we begin this uh, entire formula I will add a function called offset over here okay and then bracket open Cool. I will say comma here 0 comma 0 comma one second count a function again bracket open sheet 1 and this particular formula we are adding again which we have did earlier Cool. So this is what we are doing it and typing it over here and bracket close. So now this formula is ready. Okay. And this particular formula only we are giving this reference to the pivot table. Cool. Now this name range has been prepared for us. Let me just show you this name range using the formula. So you can use this particular in the formula. Cool. So whenever I add is equal to name range and I press enter you can see okay this particular entire data set will be available over here cool but this is not the entire video series on that so our video series is basically to show you automatic updates of the pure table and chart cool so let's move ahead and uh, create a pure table which is our third step for creating a pure table I will just simply select from table and here I will say table range would be my this new range which is name range and new worksheet cool as soon as I type that name name range so I get I will automatically get this fields added which is date product and sales if you could see it over here right date I will just keep it in the left hand side again product in the column section and I want sales into this particular section 
school now this blank is showing us because in the name range itself we have selected the below entries as well so that's the reason it's showing us on a blank yeah now what we want we want a slicers to be added but before we add a slicer we need a chart correct so chart you can simply click here you can insert a line chart okay if you need it or maybe simply just click on this recommended chart you will get this you know different different visualization which you can use it I will use this 3d column last one and enter it cool I don't want uh, anything data to be shown so that's what I know I'll just hide all and then simply I just place it over here now I just want a title to be added over here so that's what I know I just click on this chart title and simply just say sales amount and I don't want a grid line I'll just remove it turn on the data label so data label will be on cool so it's closed now what we have did so far so far we have just imported a chart over here this is the name range we need to import a buttons over here so basically we can import those slicers in the pure table analyze and then click on this slicer I want date and product these two filters I want it over here so I'll just simply drag it down and just simply keep it aside like this you can change the color code as well that's not an issue you can do that cool likewise let me just arrange this as well I will keep this on the top and uh, I will just simply delete this I don't want that yep so so far we have arranged this particular data set over here great we have covered so far step 4 now step 5 what we want we want to automate this cool simply just click on this option called um, just right click on the PO table okay and then there is an option called PO table options simply just click over here and then uh, ensure that you are turning this option on yeah cool here is the data option simply click on this option refresh data when file is opening okay and it's an automatic one hit ok okay this is the ok button hit ok and uh, this is what it's done now if you want to see it if in case it's an interactive or not simply just press this B button okay you can see only the B data available over here likewise I just want to see this particular, this particular date so I can see that as well okay I just want to see a related data so I can see that a related data okay if in case you are not happy with this particular chart simply just go in the design section change chart style and just simply select this chart okay and then okay cool and if in case you want to change the label you can change that as well or maybe here there are ample amount of options I'll just select this now what I want I want entire two values to be shown so I've just selected this particular option clear filter and then I can see it over here entire entries over here now when we say append a new entries at the back end okay suppose I want to add a data over here okay and uh, I will say B and here I will say 800 okay 800 I have added and if you could see over here at sheet 1 itself okay this data is not really showing why the reason behind is we haven't did a refresh at all so when I click on this refresh button you can see that data however intent over here is whenever we close this worksheet okay and when we come to the next day in the office or maybe the same day in the office when we open up this particular file we want a updated file we don't want to use this refresh button again and again okay ensure that what we can do suppose I will add a 07 over here yeah and I'll say simply a over here and I'll say 600 cool likewise if you could see over here data is not really showing cool 
let me just save this document somewhere book 4 and save it and I will close this particular file cool I will go over here again I'll click here book 4 you see this 7 data is automatically appended over here cool so this is how it's a very beautiful function uh, with defined range you can automate your task there is no need to all, convert your raw data into a table first thing second thing there is no need to click on refresh all again and again simply you can do that so this is how you can create your automatic update of the pure table and chart i hope you found this useful folks so please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching Welcome to Discover Talent Presents folks in this series what we want to cover in MS Excel how we can do a statistics okay and these are the topic formulas which widely used by the statistician or maybe our Six Sigma experts okay managers and the business leaders for now we are here to make you understand how it's easy and you can do it by your own okay so we have this uh, sales data added over here and accordingly we have the expenses Cool. Now what we gonna cover? We cover a mean, standard deviation, correlation, linear regression, median, and more. Okay, for the individual categories. So let's get started. Here we'll say mean, which means our average for what average we needed. I mean for expenses or sales. So here we have mentioned sales. So that's what we are adding this, and this is the average for us. Cool. Now what we want? We want a standard deviation for our expenses. Okay. So let me just use a formula is equal to STDEV. Okay. Dot S and then for expenses. So this is the standard deviation formula for me. Cool. So so far we have uh, covered average and a standard deviation. Cool. Now what we want? We want a correlation between sales and expenses okay so we want to correlate that you know how it works basically so correlation i will say array one which is my a2 until a11 cool and the b2 to until b11 so this is my second array this is how it's correlated to me now I want to identify a linear regression slope and intercept for now we'll only add a intercept over here slope we will explain you in the next video series okay creating a charts with the help of charts only you can directly get that result is equal to index and line list. I will say B2 until B11 comma Likewise, I have my known axis. So these are the known axis for me. Comma. Here. True. Why we are using true? True is B is calculated normally. So basically it's calculated normally. So I'm just say true. Comma. Here. I have written a additional regression statistics. So that's the reason I have selected this. Cool. Then what I want, I will just close this particular array comma i have this row number one row number one cool and the column is again column number i want a column number so i just say column number this packet close press enter so this is what i got from linear regression now it's a very simple median and mode always remember mean median mode we always do it okay uh, and majority times we focus on this mean median mode only okay to get the numbers calculated yeah median is basically to calculate a median of your sales data okay so let me just show you with a formula median and this is for my sales data so I'll just select this and the 325 so this is the median for this particular values yeah so we can go manually and just check the what is the median value for a given data set so it's a simple formula to calculate in MS Excel mode now mode mode is basically how what are the frequent values are we are seeing in the uh, particular data array so 
those particular part covering the mode segment and the mode formula basically cool. so this is my mode formula for me and this is the range here i have checked kept this dummy data for you so you can directly relate that what will be the result okay so that's what i keep this data set very simple okay so you can understand it very better manner cool you can see it's 50 all right here is the 50 cool so this is how most frequent used statistics functions we have covered in this entire series i hope you found it useful folks so please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching Now, why this error are occurring? It's a very simple task. Value error is basically a wrong type of argument or maybe the operand. Okay, meaning suppose I have this reference over here, which is A2, and I'm dividing that with AI or maybe the text. If I do it in digit, right, then I'll get a proper result. Likewise, I have this reference error. Now, if you could see over here, missing basically, correct? So I have only A2 available, okay? However, the reference of other value is not really given. Okay, so in that case, what we can do, add a digit, okay, somewhere, and then simply just say is equal to this divided by this. Okay, so we'll get a result likewise. Cool for reference. Now, what is the division? Division is nothing but a dividing the value with a zero. Okay, that time it's occurred. So when I change the value in it, right, so this error will resolve automatically developer tab click on this option called record macro okay i'll keep this name as is okay and then simply just copy this content and paste it over here cool please just insert a new row at the bottom and whenever you are having a new entry simply just select that copy from paste section click on the transpose okay so you will add a new entry accordingly click on developer tab once again clear this data first and then any of the blank cell and stop recording cool so suppose i update this data to binod w like this or maybe any other changes in my data set and after assigning this macro i will get that details added at the bottom okay carefully observe i'll just simply click on this option update so the entry will automatically reflect over here as soon as I press update button. Surface chart is basically a powerful visualization tool which you can use it in MS Excel. So very easy to do. Suppose I have this data set available with me. Okay, I'll just simply select this and then recommended chart. I'll click on this all charts and there is an option called surface. I'll simply select this and I want this particular chart. Okay, I have inserted. Now what I want, I want to insert a title over here. I just simply select this sales data like this and if in case I want to add a excess titles so I can add that as well cool so this is my sales amount month cool and likewise I have this product name over here if you could see over here 0 to 200 200 to 400 and 400 to 600 it will help us to easily analyze our data in MS Excel this is one of the most effective formula which, which we is. use in MS Excel. Let's say we want to find a minimum sales value, okay, for a Discover Talent product A. Cool. So this is the criteria we have, and the, this is the product name, and this is the criteria has been given already. Correct. Equal to sign, and then D min, and then I will say the database would be this for me. Okay. So include your headers as well comma what we want we want a sales correct so keep this sales like this comma here what are the criteria you are expecting so we are expecting this particular criteria right so i'm just selecting this bracket close press enter cool so this is what uh, we got for the result insert a date weeks month or maybe year okay simply press alt h F I and then simply S. Okay. If in case you don't want to use that, simply just click on this option and series. Okay. So simply just select this particular date first and series. Simply select a day. Just say okay. So you will get a days added over here. Okay. Likewise, if in case you want to add a weeks, you can see here weekday to be get added. Okay. Now if you could see over here in week itself, one, two, 
five, right? We don't have a Saturday Sunday added over here. Cool. So sixth and seventh is no longer available in this data. Cool. Likewise, we can see it for here as well and here as well. Cool. Now let's insert a month. Only insert a month. Simply series. Once again, press month. Cool. Likewise, if in case we need a year to be inserted automatically, simply just select this year. Cool. While doing a data analysis, which one is better? The formula column or the profit margin column? You could see it over here, right? The profit margin is perfect, correct? How we can add this formula? It's a very simple task to do, folks. Let me just delete that and just clear it out over here. Simply just add a if error, cool? So what is the calculation basically we are doing over here? So we are just getting a profit margin over here and then I'll simply add this text to validate the bills or the cost, right? So this is how it is and uh, you can easily add this formula to understand where exactly the error occurs, right? Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. The values which are more than average on the specific month, those needs to be highlighted, okay? Add a formula like this average uh, selecting this particular value you will get this value cool and what I want more than the average whatever values are there I just want to get highlighted those so I just simply select over here above average and you could see you can pick any of the color I'll select this yellow and uh, if you could carefully observe over here 5609 okay more than 5609 wherever available these are the average for us those only value are getting selected so this is how one of the most effective function above average and below average will help you to select the data thanks for watching have a great day ahead I want to hide this data simply just select this control one and type this three semicolon cool your text would be there but it's been hidden so I'll just select this Again, control one and custom column. I will just simply say zero point zero and then simply hit OK. You could see after particular digits, we have this text added automatically. Select this percentage again, control one, custom once again, simply type this. Cool. Once you add this simply just click on this OK button. You could see wherever it's negative sign, negative percentages, those are red and rest of the others is in green. Cool. So thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. Simply just use a filter function. Okay. And then what are the arrays we have? We have the arrays which is product name for us, comma. Simply just select a total sales over here full space greater than equal to and then large formula okay and then in large formula what we have the array so we have arrays from this comma how many values we need we need a top three values so I'll add a three and bracket close press enter you could see the result is been reflecting over here cool thanks for watching have a great day ahead Press is equal to and then just say x lookup okay double inverted comma I want gen results to be inserted over here what is the lookup array lookup array is this for me comma okay return array return array is this bracket close press enter okay so this is for a static uh, data when we are extracting numbers for the gen okay when we need a dynamic that time simply just click on this name category go into a data and then simply just insert a data validation okay select a range over here list and the source source is this for me press give a reference over here okay so I will just simply select this as a reference and change it you can see dynamically we can change the values of respective individuals thanks for watching have a great day ahead
to get the unique values in Excel we usually do that simply just select this click on this option remove duplicates okay continue with the current selection remove duplicates just say my data has a header and okay you can see this three unique identity correct let me just do a control Z over here another method simply just select is equal to and then unique what are the arrays we want from this to be selected and press enter so this is how the result will reflect to you thanks for watching have a great day ahead let's do a sorting for a salary range okay is equal to sort formula these are the arrays for me simply just say one and true cool press enter you could see the result over here right we have small digit okay and the larger one at the end you can do it with the help of alt dff as well okay and do a sorting accordingly smallest to largest or largest to smallest or maybe control shift l or maybe directly into a data ribbon tab there is an option called sort and filter cool so there are four methods to do a sorting thanks for watching have a great day ahead while processing a data there was a requirement from the client that you know the department needs to be show only a first initial instead the entire details cool so that time we use this formula okay let me just add this ifs and then b2 for me b2 okay is a sales basically correct uh, double inverted comma i'll just say sales okay and what i want i want shown to be s likewise in case it's a marketing then show me this as a m let me do it fast So as soon as you apply this formula just simply press enter and then just say control D okay you could see the first initial has been displaying over here cool of this particular statement flash field as well simply just type S M S and then press control E you could see the result right but this is just in a formula driven and oh, flash field driven Cool. So this is how you can uh, pull out the result of first initial from the department. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. Just do a sum for entire sales amount. What do you have it, right? And then as soon as you have the entire total, simply just do a is equal to sign this divide by this. And then just say, just select this, okay, into 100, enter cool you will get a total percentage of it right so when you do a control d you will get a formula added over here however right now we are seeing a division error the reason behind is the range is different cool so for that we need to lock the value let me just add a dollars like this okay as soon as i done let me just drag the value once again and you can see the percentage we have now we can effectively check the respective month percentage done okay thanks for watching have a great day ahead just do a sum for entire sales amount what do you have it right and then as soon as you have the entire total simply just do a is equal to sign this divide by this and then just say just select this okay into 100 enter cool you will get a total percentage of it right so when you do a control d you will get a formula added over here however right now we are seeing a division error the reason behind is the range is different cool so for that we need to lock the value let me just add a dollars like this okay as soon as i done let me just drag the value once again and you can see the percentage we have now we can effectively check the respective month percentage done okay 
Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. I want to add these names in one row. Okay. So for that, what we can do over here is simply just select this is equal to and text join function. Cool. As soon as you click text join function, you will get a delimiter to be added. Okay. So I want a comma to be added. And then simply I'll just say ignore if in case any empty sales are added. What will be the range for us? Range would be this and bracket close, press enter. You could see at one simple formula, you get the result in one go. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. Calculate a growth rate in MS Excel. So we are covering in this entire series. Okay. So this is the result what we have. Simply just use this formula. Okay. So what is the formula is equal to packet this minus your previous month's details again divide by this month okay into 100 and press enter you will see the result over here right and then what i'll do i'll just do a control d over here and i need a decimals until only a two digits cool control t and then okay go into insert ribbon tab recommended chart and here all charts combo cool and then simply at line section you will say this as a secondary okay and turn on the data labels so this is how effectively you can calculate a growth rate in ms excel to avoid any changes in the data right while we share the details with the respective stakeholders that time we use this simply just select this click on this option copy as a picture Cool. you will get a pop-up like this as shown on screen and just say picture just ok and simply click here and then click on this paste option cool you will get the bill in a picture format ok you can do it for charts as well ok to avoid any amendment in the data sets thanks for watching have a great day ahead In MS Excel, it's very simple to add your currency. Simply just click on the home ribbon tab at the numbers you could see over here. Okay. Click on this accounting option and the symbol drop down. This is your country location. You can select the currency. Cool. Suppose it's in China. I'll just select this. Okay. This is how we can insert a currency in MS Excel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. to show progressively smaller stages in a process a table where you want that to be inserted click here recommended chart and then all charts simply just click over here okay use it when data values show progressively decreasing portions right right now we can't see any decreasing portion over here the reason behind is our data set is in another format okay meaning a larger value at the top okay and the least value in the in the middle of something right so that's what we need to do it a smallest to largest first alignment okay if in case we need in this way we can keep it this otherwise simply just select this largest to smallest so this is how we can create our funnel chart in ms excel cool thanks for watching have a great day ahead I want I want my numbers to be convert automatically into a words okay that time we use this formula when I search the formula I don't find it in Excel we don't have any pre-built function available okay for that we need to create our own toggle the screen and you could see over here number two words now I can find out this particular formula the reason behind is why I got this particular formula when I add even this particular amount and just say control D I'll get an automatic result over here. The reason behind is I have developed a code over here. Okay. And this is the code for me. Cool. If in case you need a code, cool, then this particular website, we have uploaded our code folks. Okay. Just leverage this due to this uh, limitation of 50 seconds video. Uh, we are you know, keeping this short. Cool. Entire, Entire steps, steps we, have we have added in the description. Okay. Feel free to follow those. This is the status code. We can check the 
status available over here in commentary section with the help of switch it's very simple to do let me just delete this first is equal to switch function okay and then I'll just select this comma value would be this and what is the status for me pending cool likewise I will say for a value 2 to do this and WIP again 3 comma would be completed and if in case uh, no value available directly I will just say as a unknown for me bracket close press enter and then control D you could see the result over here so no need to use any nested if functions simply just use a switch function thanks for watching have a great day ahead static way how we can do that some product and then once again I will insert one more bracket over here simply just select this is equal to criteria first for me bracket close then into sign bracket open b2 until b6 is equal to this is the second criteria for me bracket close once again into what is the sales amount so sales amount would be this and bracket close in a dynamic way okay simply just go into a data ribbon tab and add a data validation over here just select a list and the data source will be this okay likewise for this as well let me do it fast great so as soon as I change this this is the result it south until end you can see the north product widget a north is 500 the same dynamic way to work on some product thanks for watching have a great day ahead This formula most frequently used at the time of automation or maybe while creating a dashboard. Okay, choose function. So I'll just select this particular index for me, and then this is the number of series for me. Okay, press enter. N right now it's showing a value error. However, we haven't selected any value here. That's the reason. Let me just select two. Cool. Let me just select three. Likewise, so and so forth. Dynamically, we can change the value over here in the given box. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. function is particularly useful in a complex reports and dashboards where data cleanliness and accurate calculations are critical okay when we see over here average function we are getting a same result correct from the same value however when I apply aggregate function again getting a same result cool so let me just add a aggregate once again for your reference it's an average what we want we want a average from this particular function average comma then I will just say ignore hidden rows and error values if any correct I'll just simply just say 7 comma I'll select the entire range over here and bracket close before I press enter I would just want to show you 5 and 6 6 number is hidden for me okay in this particular row and I press enter you could see you have the result available over here so this is how we use a aggregate function in MS Excel thanks for watching have a great day ahead